the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, I'll go over this Jordan, you and all the people, to the land which I'm giving you to them, the children of Israel. Every place that your soul of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Only be strong and, be, and, and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord is your God. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Help me pray this uh, morning. God, my Father, Lord, I pray, God, that you may bless your word this morning. God, I pray, Father God, that you, God, would just have your way this morning. God, that you will speak to every heart, God. That you speak to every man, woman, and child in this place, God. In the name of Jesus and God's people, say Amen and amen. You know, Brother Darnese, you know, he laid the foundation, man. You know, he laid the foundation on what God wants to do this morning. Amen. And today, uh, today, this morning, amen, I want to preach to you guys on awakening the brave. Awakening the brave. You know what, guys? You know, I believe that as Christian, as Christian men, as Christian women, amen, you know, there has to be a time of awakening. Can you say amen? amen. How many here agree on that? There has to be a time of awakening. There has to be a time, you know, of awakening in our own personal life, in our own spiritual life. Can you say amen? There has to be an awakening in our churches. Are you guys with me? There has to be an awakening in our church. You see, God, amen. How many know that God is a God of timing? Amen. God is a God of timing. Amen. The Bible says, amen, that in his perfect time, amen, he brought forth. His son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is a God of timing. In his perfect time, amen, the Bible says, amen, that God delivered the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. In his perfect time. He delivered his people from the land of Egypt. Amen. How many here know, amen, that God never misses an appointment? Amen. We may miss an appointment here, you know, you know, every now and then, amen, but God never misses an appointment. Amen. God never misses his time. God is a God of time. Amen. And, and his time is always perfect. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says, amen, that at the perfect time, he helped you. That at the perfect time, amen, you know, he came to you and he reached down to you and he lifted you up and he encouraged you. And not only that, but he saved you amen. at the perfect time. You know, maybe before you got saved, amen, you know, you call upon God, amen, and there was no, amen, at that time there was no sincerity in your heart, amen, but there came a time, amen, where you really desperately needed God in your life. When you desperately needed God, amen, and you cried out to God, and at that perfect time, God reached down from heaven and he touched your heart. And he helped you. See, that was a perfect time of God where he says now is the time to act amen now is the time to move and he moved in your life he moved in your life can you say amen you see God moved for the very first time in your life amen awakening your spirit from death he awakened that spirit from death the Bible says amen that we were dead in our trespasses how many say amen to that we were dead in our trespasses we were dead in our, in our sin, therefore God gave you life, amen. But many times what happens is that throughout the course of time, our spirit becomes dormant. 
Dormant. How many know the definition of dormant? That just means to sleep. Our spirit becomes dormant. Amen. You know what? In, 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 in winter, you know what? You know, the grass and the trees, they don't die. You know, they, 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 they make it dry, but they're just dormant for the following spring. Because when the spring comes, amen, you know, they become green and beautiful and all that good stuff, amen. But during that time of winter, they just become dormant. They're not dead. Hmm. See, but now God needs to awaken that dormant spirit, amen, from our sleep. Can you say amen? Because sometimes as Christians, we just become dormant. We just... You know, we're just asleep, amen. Our spirit has fallen asleep, amen. And he needs to arise, amen. You need to arise up and go over the Jordan of your life. That's what needs to happen, amen, in our life. Can you say amen? The Bible says that God spoke to Joshua, amen, and he gave him a few words of encouragement. How many need encouragement this morning? Amen. amen. I'm pretty sure that you already got in some encouragement from the words of Brother Darnese. Amen. Hallelujah. But we still need more encouragement. How many of you need a word from God? Yes. Amen. amen. We need a word from God. We need to hear from God tonight. Amen. This morning and throughout this week. We need to hear from God. Amen. Because you know what? We need to be transformed. Yes. We need to be different. Amen. Seeing God, God spoke, amen, life into the heart of Joshua because he wanted, uh, he was, amen, the next in command. He was the next in in command, you see, God is always moving forward. Can you say amen? And he wants us to move with him. Can you say amen? amen. See, we got to be in a place in our life, amen, that we need to position ourselves in a way that we recognize when God is moving and not man. See, there has to be this assurance in our life that is the Lord who is moving us, amen, to bigger and better things and our, you know, or, or our own emotions. We're not moving by emotion because we can be emotional. Can you say amen? amen? You know, we can feel the goosebumps. You know, we can feel, you know, tingly and, you know, we can feel that emotion. Amen. And, and sometimes, you know, the mistakes that we do, amen, is that we move by emotion. Hmm. See, God has to move you. God has to give you that word. God has to give you that confirmation that it's time to move. God has to give you that assurance. Hey, son, daughter, you know what? It's time to move from this place. See, God has to be the one who is orchestrating the whole show. Can you say amen and not man? Right here in, our, in, in the scripture, you know, see, the people of God, I mean, we're getting ready to go over the Jordan. They were getting ready to go over the Jordan. Amen. You see, God is ready to move, and he needed Joshua to move with him. He needed this man. He needed this, you know, next in command, amen, you know, to move with God. So you got to understand that there, that there was no one else, you know, to move these people. Because as the scripture said, amen, God spoke, uh, uh, speaks to Joshua and he says, you know what, Joshua, you know, my servant Moses, you know, is dead. He's no longer here with us. He's no longer here to, you know, to take care of his people. He's no longer here, amen, you know, to take the people of Israel to the promised land. It is your turn now. See, you're the one because there's no one else. There was no one else to take charge of this multitude of people. Amen. When Joshua was under Moses' leadership, amen, yes, he did what he needed to do. Amen. Joshua was a great disciple. But now it was time for Joshua to become the great commander of the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Abe last night, you know, he mentioned... You know, about people who are still drinking on the milk. Amen. And, and it is a funny thing. You know, when you read that scripture, you know, that, that milk, you know, um, is for the babies. You know, and, and as a new convert, you know, we should be, you know, drinking the spiritual milk for our growth. But it also says in the book of Hebrews as well, that solid food, amen, pertains, amen, to the one who is mature. See, at one point of your life, amen, you have to grow. 
and you gotta, you know, wean out of that a spiritual milk into the solid food of the gospel. See, there's gonna be a time when you're gonna have to move. You cannot just stay put in one place. You cannot just stay, amen, in, in this place and not move from glory to glory because God wants us to move from glory to glory. Can you say amen? amen. God wants us to move us to bigger and better things. Yes. See, the Bible says that milk is for the baby, but solid food is for the mature. Amen. Joshua, you know, he worked as a disciple. Amen. But now Moses is gone. Moses is, you know, he, he passed away, amen, and he's gone. So who is the one who will lead? Who is the one who's going to take responsibility? Who is going to be the one that encourages the people, who gives counsel to the people? Who is going to be the one? Joshua. That was his responsibility now. God speaks to Joshua and says, Arise, amen, arise, Joshua. This means that this is your time now. This is, amen, God's perfect timing. This is the opportunity that God had for Joshua. And I believe that God, amen, has given you opportunities and will give you opportunities, opportunities that you never had when you were in the world. Never. You know, Pastor A.B. mentioned last night that, that uh, his daughter, you know, she's 16, 17, and she's already gone to mission trips. Amen. You know, by the grace of God, man, I never even had an idea that one day I would be traveling in an airplane. Amen. You know, but by the grace of God, man, he has taken us to countries to preach the gospel. He has taken us to other countries. He has taken us to Colombia, to Venezuela, to Ecuador. Amen. He has taken us places. And see, this is the, the opportunities that God has for you and I. Amen. Once we start believing and we start moving in God. See, God gives us an assignment. Can you say amen? amen? He gives assignment to his people, amen, to men and women. God gave an assignment to Joshua, and this assignment needed to be completed. You see, when Moses died, they could have continued moving, amen, on their emotion. They could have continued moving on their emotion, amen, but God had them, you know, stay put into the fullness of time. Until it was the perfect time for them. Until it was the perfect time. See, God, for God it was the perfect time. But see, for, for Joshua, it was not. At that time, when God called them to move, you know, it was, you know, Joshua saw it as not the perfect time. But God saw it as the perfect time. You know, After a, a year or two of when I got saved, you know, God spoke to me clearly, man, on, on, you know, becoming a preacher and whatnot. And see, but at that moment, when God called me, it was not the perfect time. When God spoke to me, when God spoke to my life and said, you know what, son, I want you to become a pastor. I was not ready at that perfect time. At, at that time, I was not ready. Amen. Two years went by. Amen. At that moment, it was, you know. When I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the church and, and, and the, in the church and the fellowship, amen, it was going great. Me and my wife, you know, we became, uh, you know, Bible study leaders. We had our own group. You know what? And everything was going great. You know, she got a, a, a nice job. You know, she paying like 30, uh, 30 bucks an hour. I had my good job, you know, working, you know, awesome uh, hours, amen. You know, having time for my fellowship, having time for Bible study, for service. Everything was going well. You see, but then God said, it's time to move. God said, it's time to move. He said, arise because this is your time now. This is your time. I have opened this door of opportunity for you. Amen. I have opened this door of opportunity. You see, amen, everything happened so fast, folks. Amen, I got saved and I lasted in my church four years. You know, and, and I thought, oh, man, you know what? Well, because of my first conference, you know, I saw, you know, at least 
four couples or five couples, uh, couples got sent out, and I was like, oh man, well, at least it's gonna be a while before I got I get sent out. Huh. At least it's gonna be you know at least it's gonna be ten years. I don't know. Huh. So you know I got time to you know to you know to chill and, and, and do what I need to do. You know what and, and, and get more experience and whatnot. But it only took four years. Huh. Four years. You know and I remember. On a Thursday night, you know, during conference, amen, you know, I was in the back in the sound booth, amen, and I was just chilling because, you know, I, I, I was a, a head usher, you know, so you had, you had Jews, right, you had priorities, amen, so I was saying, hey, you know what, you know, just orchestrating here and there, so, amen, um, by, almost by the end of the service, Pastor Elvis comes to me, he says, you know, I want to talk to you, it's very important, so I was like, oh, man, you know, he's going to get me in trouble because. I don't know, you know, something happened or, or whatever, you know, you know, when you face a pastor, uh-huh. amen, you know, your mind gets, <laughs> it starts wandering off. But anyway, amen, he pulled me to the side and he says, you know what, Junior, I want to send you out. I want to send you out. And, but see, he says, I want to send you out, but you got to let me know as soon as you can, because I want to announce it tomorrow, the following day for Friday night. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. You know, let's do it. Amen. And, and at that moment, amen, you know, I just felt like it was just like, a, like an overwhelming, you know, sensation. I was like, oh, man, you know, what have I done? Right? <laughs> but guys, I, I heard God, you know, just speaking to my life. says, this is your time. Mm. This is your time. I want you to arise because this is. Your time. God spoke to my period, my, my, my spirit. He says, you know what? It is time. It is time to move. In essence, what God was telling me that, you know what? You cannot just stay on this side of the Jordan. You cannot just stay on this side of the Jordan. And that was God was telling Joshua, you cannot just stay on this side of the Jordan. Amen. You need to cross over to the other side. You need to step it up. I want you to awaken yourself from this comfort. I need you to awaken yourself from this commodity and from this stagnation. No more folding of the hands, you sluggard. Amen. No more folding of the hands. No more just sitting around. No more just, uh, you know, just having a good time. You need to cross over this Jordan. You need to cross over this obstacle in your life. You got to move in faith and take risks, can you say? Because the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight, can you say? And God wants to awaken the brave this morning. How many brave people do we have? Amen. Amen. Come on, church. How many brave people do we have this morning? God wants to awaken the brave. Amen. Why? Because it is your turn now. Amen. Youngster, it is your turn now. You cannot be holding your pastor's hand for, you know, forever. Amen. At one point, he's going to let you go. And it's your turn now. Because this younger generation that is coming up, hey, you're the next preacher. You're the next evangelist. You're the next teacher. You're the next missionary. Amen. You're the next person that will go, amen, to other countries. You will be the next person, amen, that we pray for people. And they will be healed. You will be the next person, amen, that will be giving words of wisdom and knowledge. You will be the next one. You will be the next one in command. See, and the enemy is attacking, amen, the youth. The enemy, you know, is trying with all of his mind, amen, you know, to destroy the youth. Why? Because he knows, amen, that if you get on fire for God, uh, if you just get full of the Spirit of God, man, you will tear this world up. You will tear it up. See, God wants to awaken the brave this morning. Amen. No more slumber. Amen. No more folding of the hands. No more comfort. No more stagnation. But more mobilization. Can you say amen? amen. No more being amen. reluctant. Amen. But be more relentless. More amen. fearless. Amen. amen. Just being a go-getter. Can you say amen? Amen. God needs more risk takers. God needs, amen, more visionaries. 
See, when you move with God, you become a visionary. When you move with God, you, you, you become a go-getter. When you move with God, you will become fearless. When you, when you move with God, amen, you will become relentless. Why? Because you understand, amen, that there's people out there in the world that are lost, that are bound, amen, that are sick, amen, that are just lost in drugs, amen, that are bound to sin. You understand that, amen, and God gives you a vision. You know what? I got to do something for God. I got to work for the kingdom of God. I got to move with God. Amen. Amen. God said, you can't be afraid, Joshua. You can't be afraid. He says, arise and go over this Jordan. Be strong and courageous because I am moving you. I'm the one who is going to be moving you. You're not going to be moving on your own emotion. You're not going to be moving on your own accord. I'm the one who's moving you. I'm doing all the arrangements. You just follow my lead. You just move in faith. You see, Joshua had to risk and to be brave to cross Amen. the Jordan. There was a commentary that I read that says that at that time, you know, when, when Joshua was about to cross, that river, amen, uh, at that time, the river was full, meaning, you, you know, it was full of water. Uh, uh, there's some periods of time where rivers, they, they, they just, it's just a little stream of water. But at that time, it was, it was high. This means that, that, that the river, amen, you know, had strong currents. Strong currents, you know, when a river, amen, is full, amen, and has, you know, strong currents, you got to be careful. Why? Because the river carries a lot of debris. The river, amen, you know, you know, is, is dragging rocks. You might not see it on the, on, on the surface, but they're dragging on the bottom. There's a lot of things going on, amen, a lot of debris, a lot of trees. I mean, you see trees in the river, you know, just going. Why? Because of the force of the river. See, and that was, it, that, that was the reason it made it more difficult for Joshua. But nevertheless, it was God's timing. This is the time, Joshua. This is the time that you need to move. But, you know, Joshua in his mind is like, oh, man, I don't know if I can do it. Mm. You know, just imagine yourself, amen, you know, be, you know, at, 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 the, at the foot of the river, amen. You see, you know, all these, you know, uh, debris and trees and rocks, amen, and, and and you have to cross it, amen. You're going to be like, oh, man, I'd just rather chill here for another year or so. Mm. Let me just, you know, let me pitch my tent. Let me get comfortable into the river, amen, you know, just lowers down. But see, God says, this is your time. This is your time, amen. Isaiah 41, 10 says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Do you realize that this scripture is all about risk and being brave? Mm. Risk. Mm. You have to take risk. God is showing us through his word that we don't need to be afraid. Why? Because he is with us. Amen. He's with us. Can you say amen? He told Joshua, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will always be there. I will always be guiding your steps. Just continue to meditate in my law. Continue to meditate in my word. And you as a disciple this morning, amen, as a grown man, amen, grown woman, amen, you still need to meditate on the word of God. You still need to meditate on the word of God. Can you say amen? You still need to meditate, amen, on this law. And don't deviate. Don't, don't, you know, don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. And he says, you know what? I will, amen, I will help you in any situation. I will carry you, amen, if you fall. I will uphold you, amen. I will encourage you. I will be there for you. Just don't be afraid. See, fear grips us. Amen. How many of you have been fearful at one point of your life? Yes, I know I've, I've been afraid. Amen. When Pastor told me, hey, I, I'm going to announce you. And I was like, I turned wider. <laughs> but nevertheless, God said, it's your time. It's your time. You know, I read this poem. It was uh, really interesting. Amen. It says that 
I don't know if you if you read it before. Amen. But I was uh, I, I read it. And it's like it says two seats lay aside by the uh, aside by the fertile soil. The first seed said, I want to grow. I want to send my roots deep into the soil beneath me and thrust my sprouts through the earth's crust above me. I want to unfurl my tender buds like banners and announce the arrival of spring. I want to feel the warmth of the sun on my face and the blessing of the morning dew on my petals. And the seed grew. The second seed said, I am I'm afraid. If I send my roots into the ground below, I don't know who will encounter in the dark. If I push my way through the hard soil above me, I may damage my delicate sprouts. If I let my buds open and, and, and a snail tries to eat, me, eat them, and if I were to open my, blo uh, my blossoms, a, a small child may pull me from the ground. No, it is much better for me to wait until it's safe. And so she waited. A young hen scratching uh, around in the early spring ground for food found the, wait the waiting seed and ate it. Amen. Let me ask you this morning, church, which one of these seeds do you identify yourself with? Are you the one that's taking risks? Are you the one that's taking challenges every day? Are you the one that wants to grow? Or are you the one that's afraid? Are you the one that's setting back? Are you the one that says, you know what, it is safer here. Are you the one, amen, that says, you know what, Lord, I want more of your spirit. I want to go places. I want to do your will, Lord. Or you're that seed that says, you know what, I'd just rather stay here. Mm. Not taking up a challenge. See, God, amen, you know, I think it's time, amen, to, for the brave, amen, to be awakened because you were born for such a time as this. Amen. You were born for such a time as this. God brought you forth. Amen. For such a time as this. Can you say amen? The Bible says that Esther was, you know, was one who freed the people of God. You know, she, she freed the people of God. Amen. Why? Because there were no one else. There was no one else to free the people of God from, from annihilation. There was no one else. But Esther was there. And she was born for such a time as that time. At the perfect time. Amen. She had, you know, she had to step it up. She had to step it up. Amen. She was born to deliver the people of God. Moses was born for such a time as his time. Because at a perfect time, God, amen, brought forth Moses and he spared him. You see it, amen. How, you know, his mom, amen, you know, just... Put him in a basket and threw him in the river. But God spared him. Why? Because uh, Moses was to become the deliverer of the children of Israel. <laughs> Understand this church. That God, amen. And God is a God of timing and his perfect time. Because at the perfect time, God himself brought forth his son Jesus to save humanity. At the perfect time. He sent them. At the perfect time, he sent them, amen, for him to go to the cross. So he can save you. Amen. So he can save me. Amen. amen. Galatians 4, 4 and 5 says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. We might receive the adoption as sons. Amen. You know what, church? I believe. I believe, amen, that we have Joshua's in the house this morning. I believe that we have Esther's in the house this morning. I believe that we have commanders of the army of the Lord. I believe that we have women of God, amen, that will proclaim the gospel, amen. All you have to say, Lord, it says, you know what, Lord, I want more of you. I want more of your spirit, God. I want more of your anointing, God, because I want to be used. I want to be your oracle. I want to be your mouthpiece. I want to declare the gospel of Christ. I want to declare the love of God. I want to I wanna be just sitting around in, in, in some pew. I don't want to be sitting around in some chair, but I want to do more for the kingdom of God. Why? Because you have to understand that God has implanted a vision in your life. God has put this vision that you know what? You need to do what I'm telling you to do. You have to move in faith. 
You have to cross the Jordan. You cannot stay on this side any longer. You cannot just stay on this side of the Jordan. No more of stagnation. Because it's your turn now. It's your time. Amen. See, if you say yes to God, man, he'll take you. And he'll take you as far as you want to go. Are you with me? Yes. God will take you as far as you want to go, man. God promised Joshua that wherever his foot stepped on, it was given to him. Why? Because Joshua moved with God and he moved in faith. Amen. He moved in faith. If you move with God, you're moving in faith. And when you move in faith, miracles happen. Amen. Miracles happen. And you say, Amen. How many have prayed for people? Pretty sure that most of us. How many here have been reluctant at times to pray for someone? You know, when God is saying, pray for that person right there. Speak to that person. And you're like, uh, maybe, I don't know. But then you, 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 you say, you know what, man? Okay, I'll do it. And then you go. And then when you, you know, speak to that person or pray for that person, a miracle happens. Mm. You know, that person gets saved because that's a miracle. Yes. Amen. Amen. That person gets healed. That's a miracle. Amen. Amen. That person, you know, transformed their life, man. You just don't know. See, when you move with God, you're moving in faith and miracles take place. Amen. How many are here this morning? Oh. You know, the, and, and the Bible says that in chapter 3, it says that the Levites carrying the ark went before the people. And it says that they stood by the edge of the river while the people saw from far off. I want you to pay attention to this. It says that Joshua as well as the rest saw the river divide as soon as the Levites gave the first step. I want, you to, I want you to pay attention, amen, because this is very encouraging. You know, the, you know, the theme of this conference is, is battle cry. Yes. Amen. amen? I want you to pay attention for this, amen, because imagine, just picture it. The Levites are in front. The people are staying behind. The people, you know, they have this visual of the river, amen, and the, and the priest carrying, you know, the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant. And as soon as they gave that first step towards that water, the water divided. Mm. The water divided, amen, you know, pushing back all the debris and all the water and all, that, uh, all the things that the water was carrying. They pushed it back. And at that moment, as they begin to step and cross on dry ground, a battle cry came out from the can. Why? Because God is with us. He has shown us. Amen. And right now, we will take possession of the land because we're the next generation that will do it. Amen. They gave a battle cry right there. Just imagine, man. That's, it just gives me chills. Oh. Because you've got to understand, man, that they were the next generation. They were the next people. And they give a battle cry of victory. Saying, you know what, Lord? Thank you for being with us and not abandoning us. You know, my encouragement to you this morning is this. You know what? Don't let this conference just be another conference. Don't let this conference just be, oh, you know what? Yeah, it was a cool conference. And that's it. Mm. See, but let it be different. Yes, amen. Let it be different. Let God speak to you. Let God take you. Let God rise in you. Amen. Let the Spirit of God rise in you because it is your time. Amen. This is your time, amen, to take possession of what God has for you. Yes. It's like Brother Denise said, hey, you know what? If you're, if you're just in your insecurities, you know, you will say that you will not attain what God has for you. What if, if, what if the people would say, you know what, I don't, I don't think we can. You know, the river is too strong. We, we, we're not going to be able to cross it. That's an insecurity. Because they're not relying on God. They're relying on their emotion. 
We cannot rely on our emotion, folks. Amen. Although we are emotional people, but we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm, amen. amen. God has given a, a tremendous opportunity, amen, to the people of this time. We have, amen, more things, amen, that, uh, that the people from before had. And I preached this message uh, uh, a few sermons ago, a few, not, a few weeks ago. Amen. That the church of God, the church of today, needs more the power of God. Mm, amen. Because when you compare the church of Acts to the, to the church of this era, you know, the church of this era is lacking the power of God. The church of Acts, they had the power of God. They didn't have cell phones. Mm. They didn't have social media. Amen. They didn't have Uber. They didn't have cars. But they had the power of God. Amen. And that's all we need. Can you say amen? We need the power of God. Amen. You need to, you know, anoint yourself with that oil. Let the anointing be upon your life. Amen. Prepare yourself. Amen. Do what you need to do. If you're a disciple in this place, you do what you need to do. Prepare yourself. Read. You know, be in fellowship with God. You know, saturate yourself. Drench yourself with the Spirit of God. Amen. Why? Because it is your time. Amen. You cannot be wasting time no more. Amen. All of us, we cannot be wasting time or say, oh, you know, we'll let the other brother handle it. Let sister so-and-so handle it. No, man, it is your turn. Because you were born for such a time as this. God has given you an opportunity. Yes, Lord. Leonard Ravenhill said these words, and I'll let you go. Mm. I'm pretty sure you like them. Mm -hmm. It says, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. Let me repeat that again so it can sink in. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. God has given you an opportunity today. Amen. Today. Tomorrow is gone. Today. Right now. God is saying, you know what? You want more of me? You come to me. You want more of my spirit? You come to me. You want to be filled with the anointing of God? You come to me. You seek my face. And you know what? I'll take you places. I'll take you to other countries. I, you know, I'll take you to the next neighborhood. Amen. But I'll take you to places you've never been. Amen. I have a destiny for you. So you have to get out of that comfort and cross that Jordan. That Jordan is an obstacle. And you say Amen. God give you, amen, God has given you opportunities, but you need to awaken your spirit to receive those opportunities. We cannot just stay dormant for the rest of our life. We cannot just stay on cruise control, even though we like cruise control. Hey, God, you know, I thank God for cruise control, man, because, you know, when I'm driving, I'm tired, and I just want to, you know, put that cruise on and, you know, relax my feet for a little while. But, hey, you can't have it on cruise control, you know, all the time because, you know, there's traffic. You have to press and operate. Huh. Amen. God says it is your time now. Amen. It is your time now. Amen. And as you cross that Jordan, as you cross that Jordan to your destiny, to your blessing, while you're crossing that Jordan, scream with a battle cry. Amen. Shout with a battle cry. Shout with a battle cry of victory. Amen. Because God has given you the land. Amen. God has given you the land. We just need to awaken. We just need to awaken ourselves and realize that, you know what? This is our time. Amen. This is our time. Amen. Hallelujah. Every head bowed. Why? Because God is with us. He has shown us. Amen. And right now, we will take possession of the land because we're the next generation that will do it. Amen. They gave a battle cry right there. Just imagine, man. That's, it just gives me chills. Oh. Because you got to understand, man, that they were the next generation. They were the next people. And they gave a battle cry of victory. Saying, you know what, Lord, 
Thank you for being with us and not abandoning us. You know, my encouragement to you this morning is this, you know what? Don't let this conference just be another conference. Don't let this conference just be, oh, you know what, yeah, it was a cool conference, and that's it. Mm. See, but let it be different. Yes, amen. Let it be different. Let God speak to you. Let God take you. Let God rise in you. Amen. Let the Spirit of God rise in you because it is your time. Amen. This is your time, amen, to take possession of what God has for you. It's like Brother Denise said, hey, you know what? If you're, if you're just in your insecurities, mm. you, know, you will say that you will not attain what God has for you. What if, if, what if the people would say, you know what? I don't, I don't think we can. You know, the river is too strong. We, we, we're not going to be able to cross it. That's an insecurity. Because they're not relying on God. They're relying on their emotion. We cannot rely on our emotion, folks. Amen. Although we're emotional people, but we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm, amen. amen. God has given a, a tremendous opportunity, amen, to the people of this time. We have, amen, more things, amen, that, uh, that the people from before had. And I preached this message uh, uh, a few sermons ago, a few, not, a few weeks ago. Amen. That the church of God... The church of today needs more of the power of God. Mm, amen. Because when you compare the church of Acts to the, to the church of this era, you know, the church of this era is lacking the power of God. The church of Acts, they had the power of God. They didn't have cell phones. Mm. They didn't have social media. Oh. Amen. They didn't have Uber. They didn't have cars. <laughs> but they had the power of God. And that's all we need. Can you say amen? We need the power of God. Amen. You need to, you know, anoint yourself with that oil. Let the anointing be upon your life. Amen. Prepare yourself. Amen. Do what you need to do. If you're a disciple in this place, you do what you need to do. Prepare yourself. Read, you know, be in fellowship with God. You know, saturate yourself. Drench yourself with the spirit of God. Amen. Why? Because it is your time. You cannot be wasting time no more. Amen. All of us, we cannot be wasting time or say, oh, you know what? Well, let the other brother handle it. Let sister so and so handle it. No, man, it is your turn. Because you were born for such a time as this. God has given you an opportunity. Yes, man. Leonard Ravenhill said these words, and I'll let you go. Mm. I'm pretty sure you like them. It says, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. Let me repeat that again so you can sink in. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. God has given you an opportunity today. Amen. Today. Tomorrow is gone. Today. Right now, God is saying, you know what, you want more of me, you come to me. You want more of my spirit, you come to me. You want to be filled with the anointing of God, you come to me. You seek my face. And you know what, I'll take you places. I'll take you to other countries. I, you know, I'll take you to the next neighborhood. Amen. But I'll take you to places you've never been. Amen. I have a destiny for you. So you have to get out of that comfort and cross that Jordan. At Jordan is an obstacle. And you say amen. amen. God give you, amen. God has given you opportunities, but you need to awaken your spirit to receive those opportunities. We cannot just stay dormant for the rest of our life. We cannot just stay on cruise control, even though we like cruise control. Hey, God, you know, I thank God for cruise control, man, because, you know, when I'm driving, I'm tired, and I just want to, you know, put that cruise on and, you know, relax my feet for a little while. But, hey can't have it on cruise control, you know, all the time because, you know, there's traffic. And you have to press and not break. Huh. Amen? God says it is your time now. Amen. 
It is your time now. And as you cross that Jordan, as you cross that Jordan to your destiny, to your blessing, while you're crossing that Jordan, scream with a battle cry. Shout with a battle cry. Shout with a battle cry of victory. Amen. Because God has given you the land. Amen. God has given you the land. We just need to awaken. We just need to awaken ourselves and realize that, you know what? This is our time. This is our time. Amen. Hallelujah. Every head bowed.